Okay. Uh, good day. For this video, we will uh, try to talk about uh, the arts and its forms no? in ancient and medieval uh, Chinese civilizations and dynasties. Uh, because uh, mainly, this will cater uh, grade 7 students. Uh, we will, as much as possible, uh, narrow down everything to the basics and fundamentals of this topic. Okay, so let's start. So first, uh, let's try to understand that mainly Asian art has uh, a different approach no, to that of the, the Western or Westernized art. Uh, hence, it will create uh, various uh, uh, art forms no, with different approaches no, from literature, architecture, uh, pottery, metal works, uh, calligraphy, no, uh, even the language no, in the literature, uh, visual arts, no, uh, even food. No, from uh, the shallow and deep meanings, it, it has its own uh, uh, purpose no so uh for example uh it may look uh, similar no when it comes to the purpose of uh, using arts in terms of uh religion no or uh, beliefs but uh of course because uh, uh west and the asia or the east has uh what they call this different beliefs no or religions uh, the religious purpose or patronage of the religion will have a different uh, approach. No, you might have the same agenda. No, the court or the temples no might have uh, uh, the same agenda for uh, the patronage, but uh, the meanings of the art forms will have differences. No, for example, of course, uh, uh, in terms of deities, no. Uh, the West has only one deity, no? and the East has uh, different various deities in uh, various religions also. No? So that's just an example. Ayan. So, ayan. so let's start with the Chinese art. So let's define no? China first is uh, one of the biggest, no? if not the biggest country in the world. So according to... Uh, uh, to artincontext.org no uh, around 9000 square kilometers by size and the population around uh, uh, 1.4 billion no it's a large country with vast population therefore of course it will have a rich uh, uh what do you call this rich uh, repository of culture no and uh, uh, history so it, it, it uh, existed since the prehistoric times no? so later we will try to uh, go over that huh? so there are forms go back no, to prehistoric times from the Neolithic period all the way through the dynasties that shaped no, their politics and cultures no? so the times that uh, they were united no, by the dynasties as an empire for over two million years ago, ayan, uh, th th this Peking man or Homo erectus pekinensis was discovered in northern China, no present day Beijing. Ayan, so uh, the history or art history uh, recorded this. No? So, ayan, so during the Neolithic age from uh, 7000 before Common Era to 17 before Common Era people were hunting gathering no typical uh, communal uh, primitive communal uh, way of living to survive no uh, of course uh, the culture of craftsmanship already appeared no in those times uh, because of the neolithic tools no the paleolithic tools etc used by the people the early people to of course to uh, to live yeah. and to create their uh, homes no to cook their food no? to gather their food yeah and yeah and this uh stage no uh 
started the early pottery, early uh, forms of uh, pottery in the world na eventually will become significant when it comes to uh, Chinese pottery. No? Also, uh, uh, if you're uh, aware, no, that China is uh, one of uh, the major uh, countries that is uh, re very remarkable when it comes to uh, pottery. So let's start with the characteristics, no? So the common characteristics of Chinese art, when we say characteristics, uh, these are the, the things that we need to consider to identify or to understand, no? What is Chinese art and what is not? Ayan. So not just, of course, in the visual aspect, but uh, in its rational, it, in its uh, uh, deeper meanings, no? Ayan. So... So the common characteristics of Chinese arts come from the philosophical, no, maybe the Confucianist and uh, the Taoist uh, beliefs, the Buddhist no? cultural beliefs. Yeah. Uh, we will always see no? these elements, no? especially they are uh, often uh, using natural elements no? or environment, nature, uh, when it comes to uh, producing art forms. No? So, yeah, so. Most of the time, depictions of mountains, uh, seas, no, uh, birds, uh, dragons, even no mythical. Ayan. So Chinese artists were followers, no, of Confucianism. Ayan. and the uh, art would be depictions of their morality, no. So it always have a usually it hold, uh, it uh, uh, has an attached or written poem within, no. Uh, for example, a painting, no? So, Chinese artwork sometimes appears to be simple and minimal to emphasize meanings and morality. So, uh, sometimes, uh, visually, to emphasize, no? To emphasize character, no? So, the character in the foreground, no? Remember, the principle of art, uh, emphasis, ayan. And, uh, of course, uh, to emphasize also the poetry, especially uh, for the paintings that has poetry in it. Yeah. So another important about the artists are uh, they are scholars. No, they are part of the China's caste system or class system. No, so they are uh, uh, required to be scholars. No, they they are uh, required to obtain or to be in that. Uh, uh, social class yan uh, yan and of course ito this is important no so uh, to obtain a skill no or to learn a skill they are often required to ano to obtain this knowledge from the masters meaning for example some of them uh, uh, learn from the masters by uh, creating an exact replication of their art yan so court art was another so artists were also of course commissioned by uh, uh, patrons of the court no uh, for example uh, lords no ministers royalties ayan, for decorations no in their palaces and other uh, structures such as tombs so when it comes to forms of course uh, there were uh, according to the artincontext.org, there were many contributing factors surrounding Chinese artwork. And it's important to remember the evolution of these modalities throughout the different developments of each dynasties and periods of conflict. Some modalities serve different purposes and meaning. So meaning uh, each dynasty no, in uh, their uh, time period contributed. No? to the uh, improvement no, of uh, the forms. No? Meaning, for example, uh, one of my examples there that I observed is the, the depiction of clouds, no? the depiction of uh, uh, mythological uh, creatures no? from the uh, simpler uh, but still elaborate uh, forms no? or uh, depictions in the earlier dynasties to the much more complicated drawing or uh, detailed sculptures of uh, depicting the clouds and the creatures in the later dynasties. So use of much more colors, use of uh, maybe because of uh, the development of 
tools, etc. Ayan. Of course, calligraphy and landscape painting were two of the most important uh, forms in Chinese art. And landscape paintings are very common in uh, Chinese art. Ayan. So sometimes they were uh, ideal. They were depicted ideal and not actually what it seems to be in reality. Okay, so let's start with the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties. Ayan, so we will just uh, go through this. So some historical accounts tell that the Xia dynasty around 2070 to 1600 before Common Era ruled by the uh, Emperor Yu the Great. So some historical accounts tell something about this, but due to uh, insufficient evidence of uh, factual evidence of their existence it was uh, still uh, labeled as mythical no? so other historical accounts say that uh, it was just invented by the succeeding dynasty so the Zhou and the Shang Yon. so the Shang dynasty or the Yin dynasty naman ruled from 1600 to 1046 BCE from the Yellow River so the Yellow River is very uh, important in a uh, uh, the, the formation of the Ch early Chinese civilizations. Uh, why? Because, uh, of course, water. No, all, almost all civilizations in the world, uh, or all, no, uh, was formed beside a water body, no? namely, a, especially a river. Yeah. So, yeah, the Zhou has a continuity of similarities with the Shang Dynasty. So. The Shang Dynasty was the early Bronze Age because of their uh, uh, development, early development in culture such as uh, for systems of writing, astronomy, and mathematics. No? Uh, and it was, of course, eventually improved no? and uh, continued by the Shang Dynasty, uh, the Zhou Dynasty rather, and so tagged as the late no? Bronze Age during this period. Uh, the mandate of heaven concept no was in enforced no as a political tool so the mandate of heaven is given to the emperors no so that they will be legitimate or uh the rightful ruler because uh it was mandated by the heavens for them to rule yeah. so during these times the philosophies of confucius and laozi also developed respectively Confucianism and Taoism that's why Confucianism and Taoism are still popular even uh, up to the present time so, and not just in uh, China but also uh, around the world so these philosophies became worldwide ways of thought and still present today right so mainly of course the slides will uh, tackle mainly uh, this early four dynasties from the ancient to the medieval uh, periods no? in Chinese art or in Chinese history rather so the Qin, the Han, the Sui and the Tang so we won't be able to uh, tackle of course uh, the other non-major uh, dynasties no? the short-lived the others no? the Three Kingdoms period, the Chuan contentions and the Warring State periods because these are uh, uh of course very political and very much detailed no in terms of uh, uh history and uh m might as well of course if i will to I, I were to discuss uh for example the chin art probably it will overlap no in the two han and the han dynasty art will o also overlap with that no? so uh i will uh, only be able to cater the uh, major dynasties no? because of their major contribution and of course uh, of the time limit yeah. so let's start with the Qin dynasty around 20 uh, 221 BC I'm sorry yeah. so the ruler of the feudal Qin state Yongjing uh, united all of China under himself as Qin Shi Huangdi or meaning uh, the first sovereign emperor Qin. No? So the entire China uh, was uh, became Qin no? territory and him as the ruler. So Qin Shi Huang was never a great patron of the arts 
but of course memorable for his contribution to Chinese and world art history as the first leader to unify the China, uh, the mainland, of course. Yeah, his introduction of uniform written language, of course, is of course a, a part of art, uh, art forms, no, or uh, uh, history that pave be better communication. That of course communication will uh, be equivalent to a better trade and cultural exchange, no. So he was a historical figure for his architecture and engineering projects, which were made possible by his abolition of aristocratic owners. No? So this is a bit political. No? So thus giving himself direct control over the masses and thus access to public, huge public workforce. No? Hence, uh, he was able to uh, mobilize no? huge uh, manpower or vast manpower to create his uh, project. So some of it, of course, is uh, his mausoleum, no, with the uh, uh, various sculptures of no? the terracotta army, no? and of course some of the trinkets that uh, will be uh, brought, no, uh, by the dead to the un to the underworld. Of course, the Great Wall, and of course his road system, and th there's a lot, no, even. Uh, in uh, the irrigation yeah. so there's a lot but uh, of course the main artistic of uh, uh, architectures no, recorded in uh, his name was the great wall and the terracotta army yeah. so the chin mark chinese art for its contribution in creating the multi-figure uh, sculpture and of course and yeah, that 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 was uh, uh, to protect him in the afterlife so these are his contributions, so the Great Wall and the <clears throat> Terracot Army. So this is just one of the many figures. Next is the Han Dynasty. So according to literature and the historical records, the structures uh, in the Han Dynasty were plastered na and uh, painted with, ima uh, with images or figures of subjects and historical scenes from the history or mythologically no so folklore beliefs no based on taoism no? so taoism also has deities no uh murals no uh emerged no? in uh, these times no so that's why it's plastered and painted uh artists were of course unknown because uh, they were uh, often interchangeable with craftsmen but uh, they were ranked no, according to status. <clears throat> yeah. So they, they also create paintings no, in standing screens, so the dividers. <clears throat> and of course, uh, silk, no, scrolls. No. Even though, of course, paper is already in, uh, invented in these times, no, but uh, there's no uh, enough substantial record to prove that uh, people are already using this popular uh, or paper is already popular in terms of uh, art no? so uh, hand paintings were also present of course in tombs no in the funerals uh, they, where they paint of course the, the tomb the, the clothes no the fabrics even the structure itself the tomb and the, uh, the trinkets that were needed for the funeral yeah. So according to uh, Britannica, the subject ranged from the attempted assassination of the Qin Emperor. This is a historical event, no? Uh, to feasting and uh, mythological themes, no? So although they are depicted chiefly in silhouette with little interior drawing, the effect is lively and dramatic. No? These well-known works have been generally taken as representative of hand painting style since its discovery. So, this is the label. No, this is their trademark. And is also popular for creating trade routes. Of course, the Silk Road was uh, formed no, or discovered during the Han Dynasty. No, that uh, eventually uh, became very useful to the Chinese civilizations, even the. Uh, following dynasties uh, because of course uh, 
of the silk, no, their main product, and of course, the cultural exchange from the West and the other uh, countries. That's why maybe uh, Buddhism and other religion from the Western in uh, Asia uh, made its way you know, to China and you know, Korea and Japan. Okay, it's contributions. So this is a uh, this is a cloth, no, for a funeral, a pottery, no. The the this is the first ever, I think, the first ever a uh, paper, one of the first papers uh, produced in Chinese civilization. This is not the first one mainly, but may, uh, maybe in their timeline, this is a paper from Han. So, this is the mural, no, of. Uh, a banquet. This is a dead uh, man covered with uh, golden threads and jade tile. So, and this one, uh, the seal. This is the heirloom seal of the realm. So this is missing. And I, I think I've watched a video that uh, the value of this seal is now uh, worth trillions of dollars because it's still missing since. Uh, since the three kingdoms period, everyone is uh, fighting for it because, of course, this is the uh, this this is the uh, uh, the seal of the emperor. They they use this to uh, affix signature of the emperor for orders. No? So if you have this, you have power. Uh, that's why uh, I would understand if it will worth trillions of dollars now. So you will, if you have this, you could be. Well, uh, nominally an emperor in the present times. So followed by the Sui Dynasty, or Sui Dynasty, yeah. founded by Emperor Wen. Yeah. So uh, his name is Yang Jian for, for 541 to 604, a former high official of the Bei, Bei or Northern Zhou Dynasty. During this period, like the Qin, the Sui also invested taxes no, to structures and architecture. So they even extended the Great Wall. So uh, the following dynasties, of course, they extended the Great Wall. But uh, Sui is uh, ba, maybe notorious about that. So ayan, Chinese painting and forms of decorative art flourished, namely in pottery, lacquerware, and jade carving. So later I will be, uh, show e examples of that maybe. So art patronage emerged in the Sui court and the elite. Yeah. So Chinese painting according to uh, visualartscourt.com and forms of decorative art such as Chinese pottery and Chinese porcelain as well as lacquerware as well as jade carving benefited significantly from this architectural splurge. Thought. And Chinese painters in particular flocked the Sui court in search of patronage. Yeah. So Buddhism rose strong in China during the Sui. Emperor Yangjian converted to Buddhism to legitimize, uh, le legitimize his rule. No? Because mainly this is popular religion. So me, I will join this no? to, to, to make my uh, reign more popular. Yeah. So Buddhism in a way swayed, of course, uh, culture that contributed to visual art in China. Uh, diba? So, the Sui dynasty paved you know, the way for the Renaissance in Tang. So, Buddhism created several demands in art forms like sculpture. So, the Buddhist sculptures emerged in these times. Uh, of course, in uh, other forms like uh, paintings, you know, the Tangka paintings, you know, the the Ink, you know, that that like print, like scroll paintings of uh, Buddhist uh, deities, Buddhist uh, uh, sutras, etc. Ayan. So, uh, Buddhist stone cultures also became popular. Various kinds of statues of re and and relief, no? So relief, what when we say relief, it's like a wall bound sculpture, no? It's like two D, but it's three uh, D on the other side, but it's wall bound, yeah. So bronze and ivory was also used to represent uh, both Buddha and Bodhisattva. So contribution. So this is an early uh, figure. No, maybe this is an ivory 
a sculpture of a sui uh, person this one may be a, a bodhisattva a buddhist sculpture so i think this is a bronze sculpture and this one is a, a painting yeah so actually this is the start of the medieval china so as you can see no a while ago it was said that is the uh, chinese uh, art is uh, uh, popular when it comes to landscape painting it started to rain yeah. so i will put the microphone closer to me so next tang dynasty so tang dynasty explored new innovations in materials medium and styles with painting and pottery tang not only encouraged local artists but welcomed art from the foreign east and uh, asia no and the west as well so sorry i'm start and stuttering because of the rain yeah. so uh east asia meaning the, the korea uh, japan and west maybe the india and further you know the europe no? uh, area so the contact between china and the world led ideas and culture being adopted and adapted yeah. The Tang Dynasty was one of the golden ages of China and considered the Renaissance period no, in Chinese arts and literature no, and in the history. No? Because, of course, uh, the trade was, uh, during this time, the trade was uh, flourishing uh, and discoveries no, uh, came from different parts of the world as well as, of course, cultural exchange, meaning uh, people purchase it, for example, from China, and in return, they can uh, uh, give knowledge and uh, their own product. So this is very uh, strong during the Tang uh, Dynasty. So uh, a big contributor to Chinese art and the prosperous era in Chinese civilization, the Tang Dynasty made its first real stability and uh, from the collapse no, of Tang Dynasty in 220 CE. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, the much more stronger funda uh, foundation no, when it comes to unification of China. Yeah. So building on the political and administrative structures, templating the structure, political structure of Sui Dynasty and building efforts to gain hegemony in Central Asia and the kingdoms along the Silk Road. So they have this uh, expedition so, to expand their territories. So ruled from its capital Chang'an or present-day Xi'an, then the most populous no, and culturally diverse city in the world. So back then, it's a very popular city. Tang China la rapidly turned into an eastern superpower of the medieval times. At the same time, Buddhism and its art continued to flourish and influences uh, influenced the Tang art until late no? Tang Dynasty when Buddhism was banned in favor, of course, of Taoism. Yeah. So this one, uh, this is uh, a portrait no, of a Tang Emperor. So I think this is Emperor Taizong, the third one, Taizong. So, according to uh, visualartscorp.com, I quote, an amalgamation of different religions, philosophies, and schools of thought. Uh, Tang arts and crafts reflected a kaleidoscope of international influences that were abolished more, mostly through conquest and trade. Ayan. So, Tang armies provided safer access along the Silk Road which maintained the flow of goods and ideas between China and Central Asia, India, and even Persia, the Middle East. A complex network of maritime routes linked Chinese ports, no? so even in the seas. No? Tang Dynasty also uh, go through the seas, uh, such as Guangzhou to India, the Persian Gulf, and the east coast of Africa. Tomb mural paintings and figure sculptures show the effect of foreign products on the fashions, accessories, and cultural habits of the Tang elite. So actually, uh, they became a uh, uh, trendsetter when it comes to fashion. No? 
especially in the ta- uh, the Tang court no so actually the Tang court was a template no to Korean uh, kingdoms and the uh, uh, early uh, Japanese medieval period so, or uh, kingdoms during their times so, uh, empire rather yeah. so that they, they templated their political structure to that of the Tang dynasty ayan so okay even the fashion no i think in several uh series you no know, or uh uh dramas uh, it depicted no how of course for example in in historical korean novellas no uh korean drama series uh i think i saw several times so that uh they adapted no Chinese clothing, especially uh, it transformed from the early Shilla, no, particular in Shilla uh, Kingdom of Korea. Uh, they adapted the Tang clothing, no, especially in the, the, the court. So it, it transitioned no, in one particular, I, I won't tell, no, the, the drama series, but I remember that. Ayun. So it it is a, an influential state no, to its vassal states and other countries because of the trade, no? the richness of uh, cultural uh, trade. Okay? So, uh, yan. Exposure to outside influence also proved to be an important stimulus to Chinese painters and sculptures because, of course, they learn from uh, other countries and other countries, of course, learn from them also because this is a cultural uh, exchange. So notably, uh, the 8th century during the reign of Emperor Xuanzong, a period which is seen as classical period of Chinese visual arts and literature. So this era set the standards to which generations of later Chinese uh, artists aspired. So I think Emperor Xuanzong is great-great-grandson of this uh, Emperor Taizong. Okay, so contribution. So uh, this one, the, the, the first two were paintings, no? So as you can see, this is a uh, uh, female clothing. No? I think they have a dog there. No? Uh, depicted in the Chinese painting. No? Again, uh, the development no, of the paintings from compared to what you saw a while ago in the Sui uh, landscape painting. This is much more detailed and vibrant. Uh, Next, of course, is a uh, uh, calligraphy no? and poetry. Even uh, Emperor Wu Zuchen, the only female ruler of Tang or Zhou dynasty, uh, created or uh, replaced some of uh, the Chinese characters so in terms of calligraphy to justify her rule. So there's a lot no, of uh, uh, Chinese characters so developed or improved. No? in uh, the Tang Dynasty. So this one, these are uh, prints no? of uh, maybe a sutra or historical record or maybe a scholarly record. No? So because uh, woodblock printing also emerged no? uh, during the Tang Dynasty. So I think they were uh, a bit ahead or maybe they adapted this in a uh, uh, cultural trade. So for the three-dimensional artworks, of course, the sculptures, no? So it's it's much more uh, defined, it's much more detailed than that of the previous dynasties, no? Uh, pottery, no? Even this one, metal work. So this is a bronze uh, vessel. This is the Wild Goose Pagoda. I think this is a, a, a project of Emperor Gaozong. No? and uh, uh, extended by his wife, the Emperor Wu Zuchen, and several grottos of uh, several Buddhas and Bodhisattvas were also built during this period. Okay? So, I uh, hope uh, this uh, very quick introduction to uh, the Chinese uh, dynasties or the, the art forms of Chinese dynasties uh, uh, help your... Uh, work or your lessons uh, please uh, know that this are uh, this is my sources no uh, uh, mainly uh, Marilyn Stockstad's art history Ayan. so I really love that book yeah. and anyway uh, 
uh, thank you again uh, and please uh, the other half po, the the song Yuan Ming and Qing Dynasties will be discussed uh, through uh, in another video so maybe just wait maybe this week or next week I will uh, uh, start producing the next topic so I think uh, stay tuned na lang. So, I see you in uh, the next video. So, so, for my students, I'll see you in class.